Hello everyone, my name is Dylan. I am a solutions architect here at SnapLogic. Uh, and today I will, giving, I will be giving you a high level overview of how to get started within SnapLogic uh, and how to get started with building your first automations or pipelines. So what you're looking at here is the SnapLogic platform. Uh, you, access it through the, you access it through the internet. Uh, you will receive credentials of a username and a password and simply you just log in through the URL. Uh, once you're in the platform, uh, once again, this is what it looks like, and it has about three different tabs or three different pages, right? So you have designer, manager, and dashboard, right? Designer is where you're going to be building out your pipelines, uh, constructing these automations, connecting different endpoints. Admin is more for, hey, where are these pipelines, files, and accounts sitting? And then, of course, dashboard is all your metrics and health checks, right? So, of course, Manager and dashboard a little bit more admin, right? And then designer is usually where the engineers uh, would sit and construct their pipelines. So what we're gonna be doing today is just the basics, right? What are the basics of Snap, Snap Logic? How do I get going? How do I use the snaps? All that kind of stuff, right? So to start off, you were going to want to get a snap from your Snap catalog, right? So all these different snap packs within them sit their own connectors or their snaps so the amazon s3 within that snap pack you have about eight or nine different snaps that do those microservices or do those actions for you right so all these snaps are made to do is make your life easier so when you're connecting to the salesforce snap or you're connecting to workday or whatever it may be all it is is usually an api call underneath the snap but the snap is just making your making your life a little bit easier. So there's over 700 snaps, right? Don't worry, it, it sounds like a lot, but there's 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 great documentation on each one of these snap packs and each one of these snaps. So we'll take you step by step on how to use them. So there's about, in my experience, there's about four or five. Of course, there's probably 10 or 20 different ways you can ingest data with Snap Logic, but I'm going to show you about the top four that I see. Right, and that would be one through a database, two through a file reader. Right, I'm reading in a CSV, I'm reading in an XML or a JSON file from an SFTP or a repository, uh, connecting to an app. Right, something like Salesforce, right, or Workday, something that is fairly popular industry wide. And then what happens if we don't have the Snap? Right, how are we going to get to it? And and the way we do that here at Snap Logic is through a, just a pure REST GET. Right. So once again, it's just hitting a REST API, but the snap is going to make your life a little bit easier. Like I said, there is probably way more than uh, way more than 10 or 20 different ways of uh, ingesting data. Right. Active Directory, Amazon S3, the list goes on. But I always think as an architect, if you can if you can retrieve data from one of these four. Right. You're going to slowly get the idea of how these snaps work. And they're all pretty much the same, in my opinion. So let's do the first one. Let's grab from a database and that's going to be Oracle, right? This could be Oracle. It could be SQL Server. It could be Postgres, right? If I could spell today, right? It could be whatever kind of database that you're looking for, right? And if we don't have your database, I, really, I very, very highly doubt it. We have most of the big names. We do have a JDBC connector, right? That's like the, that's like the rest snap pack of databases. If we don't have your snap, you can usually connect to the repository with the JDBC. So let's go to the Oracle and let's select from that table or that endpoint, right? So right away, you see it's an Oracle select that's going to ask me, hey, Dylan, whose account are we referring to or whose database are we looking at, right? It's a very smart system, but it can't look through the camera, analyze my face and know my, my username and password to my Oracle database, right? So I always say the hardest thing you're going to do in SnapLogic is set up your account. Right, because after you do that, you just grab it from a drop down. So as you see here, right, no, we're not breaking any rules here. Uh, there, there are certain credentials and there are certain protocols that you have to follow, follow when reaching endpoints. So all these snaps are doing is saying, hey, give me the required uh, credentials or attributes so I can make these calls and do these operations. So put your port number, database, host name, all that kind of stuff. The snap will pretty much tell you what it needs. You'll validate it, save it, and then you forever have it in there. Right, so SnapLogic, we don't charge you per connection, per account. So as you see here, there's a bunch of different Oracle instances. I'm just letting it know, hey, I'm using that one. 
From that point, the snap is going to try to make my life as easy as possible. Right? It's a low code, no code platform. If you do it right, you're never going to have to write a line of code or query anything. So as you saw there, it showed me all the schemas that are available. I picked mine, right, the Dylan schema, and now I can open this up and open up any other table that I have within that schema, right? Very, very easy. Something very important to talk about and something to very important to realize is validations. This is a massive differentiator for snap logic. Uh, there is different integration platforms that will show you the schema that's coming out or maybe a dummy set of data that's coming out of each snap. You with snap logic, you can check this data at any point of your pipeline. So you see that I picked my table I saved it kind of spun up and it popped up green right so it's either going to pop up green or red and what that's telling me is hey Dylan. Uh, the validation is successful, your credentials were real, and the object that you're grabbing is valid, right? And then that case, it will show me the first 1,000, first 100, uh, first 50. You can pretty much set it to whatever preference you like, but it will actually pull that Oracle table, right? And show me, hey, Dylan, here's the first 100 records, right? So God forbid I forgot what the fields look like or what the names are, it can show me right away, right? And you, as you can imagine, as you build out more uh, complex pipelines, right? There's steps of the way that as an engineer, you would want to be able to check, right? Hey, I want to see the data before the filter and I want to see the data after. With Snap Logic, right? Within a validation, you can go in there, make sure that data looks exactly how you want it to, and then you can move on, right? So let's jump back in here. So once again, with the database, of course, it's going to give you other options, right? But usually, there's about one or two fields that are required. Just use the drop downs and it will take care of everything else for you. Okay, cool. So let's talk about a, an, an application, right? Or a snap that we have, right? So it could be Microsoft Dynamics, um, HubSpot, Jira, uh, Marketo, whatever it may be. We'll use Salesforce for this example. So same concept, right? Hey, I wanna start my pipeline. I need the source of the data to be Salesforce. I'm gonna pick a Salesforce read. Right. And of course, there's other ones, right, that are more of writes, creates, upsert, update, delete. You can tell which ones retrieve data and which ones push out. And as you see, right, same kind of concept to the Oracle snap. It's a Salesforce. OK, I'm going to be reaching the Salesforce data. Whose data am I getting? Am I getting Dylan's? Am I getting your colleagues? Am I getting your clients? Right. You have to let the, the snap know, hey, what instance am I pointing at? And like I said, Right. We don't charge you per connection. So as you see here, I have multiple different sandboxes and I'm just letting the snap know, hey, I'm using this demo sandbox. All right. So now we have our th authentication. You go into your settings, just like the Oracle snap, right? The snap is going to try to do as much as it can for you. So without writing in anything, it pretty much filled in all the default values for all the required fields for this call. And now I just want to maybe interject and let it know, hey, I don't want an account object, maybe I want a lead, right? Or whatever it may be. So once again, there's gonna be other options and you can more or less granularize your, your output. But once again, very, very easy, no code, no coding needed, um, right? As long as you are familiar with the data, know your account information uh, and know what object you're going after, you can pretty much push and pull from wherever you like within this platform. So we'll let this give a validation really quick. And then we'll get to see this Salesforce data that's coming out of that instance. Cool. So just like the Oracle, right? Now I can reach in here. Let's see. Okay, it's going to give me my first 1,000 rows. I can either see it in JSON, right, and see what kind of data I'm dealing with, or I can view that in a table structure, right, a little bit easier. So once again, if you can find another platform that's able to do this, um, please, sh <laughs> please show me. I've been, I've been told that... Uh, they have no one else has ever ever seen a platform that allows you to see the data step by step. So it is a massive differentiator here at SnapLogic. And once again, right, we'll jump back to this one now that it's validated. So I have a couple of data sources. I want to see what this data looks like before the filter. OK, I have everybody. And then in the filter, I'm only filtering everyone that's not a liberal arts degree. OK, so now when I check out, if I find someone with a liberal arts degree, I know my filter didn't work, but now I'm looking through, it's all marketing, it's all business law, my filter did its job, right? So as an engineer, it's more or less satisfying, right? And it's very easy to work in this tool, right? I pick a couple of drop downs, hit validation. Okay, let's see what it looks like. 
okay, let's change a couple of things. Let's try a couple of different transformation transformations, uh, validate it, check the data. Okay, let's try again. You can truly just validate endlessly and wait until you have that perfect pipeline and then eventually push that data through. It's uh, I would say the Monday through Friday for your engineers are going to be much different than just staring at a code base. Cool. So we get, did a database. We did an app. Let's say we don't have the app, right? Or, you know, let's do a, let's do a file reader first and we'll save rest for last. So now let's say we're not dealing with an app, right? Or we're not dealing with the database. I want to read from a flat file, right? Or I want to read from a repository. So you'd select a, within the binary snap pack, I want a file reader, right? Everything pretty much follows the same structure. You can tell which ones you can write to and which ones you can read from. So the file reader is uh, very versatile, right? So you can pretty much go in here and upload a file from your computer if you'd like, right? If you had a JSON file or something that you wanna upload, you can also search your local repository, right? As you saw, you can store different files and different assets within SnapLogic. So you can go in there and say, hey, I wanna go after a certain file that's saved, right? Menu data or student data, whatever it may be. Or you can reach in and get data from one of your external repositories. So if you have an F, uh, SFTP or an FTP, FTP site or an Azure Data Lake, Azure Storage, you can pretty much put your credentials in, right? Your access keys, whatever is required. Uh, and then as long as you have a, a, a valid file path, you'd be able to reach whatever you'd like. Uh, so for this simple instance, we'll just reach in and I'll just grab something um, from my local repository, food prices, right? That save. Okay, and we're validating just like anything else. So now you might be wondering, as I went through these validations, what is this little ghost snap? So what that is, is our artificial intelligence engine called Iris, right? Hence the name, the intelligent integration platform. Uh, everything we do here is powered by AI. So it sees that I'm reading in from a file. I'm probably going to want to parse that data, right? Because it comes out in binary form. We want to parse that into JSON. So I am using a JSON parser. So all I have to do is click that, validate it, and it will take that binary output, right, and puts it into JSON for us. The diamonds represent binary, the circles represent uh, JSON. And just like that, I get to see that data that's coming out of that JSON file. Very, very easy. All right. Uh, and one other thing I should note, right, all these snaps, they move together when connected, right? So as you see here, as I unclick them or connect them, they'll move together. So They'll move upside down, side to side. It will pretty much follow the way you move, right? So if you're moving this way, it's gonna face that way. If you snap that way. So I always just say, just rip it around, right? Wait, wait until it faces the way you want and then just kind of come back to it, right? And make sure all those are connected. Cool. And then lastly, let's talk about connecting to a rest, right? So let's say we do not have the snap but that endpoint is exposed by REST API. Well, you're in luck because we have a REST snap and pretty much you can connect to anything with this, this snap, right? So if you're familiar with APIs, they pretty much run the world. If you have the credentials to reach an API, uh, you can pretty much reach whatever data you'd like uh, and you can either read from it or write from it. Uh, here at SnapLogic, right? Unlimited pipelines. So technically you can read from the Salesforce pipeline with the rest get and you can read with the salesforce snap right probably behind the snap is just an api call at, at the core right the snap is just making it easy for you so um, if you have 10 applications we all we only have snaps for two of them but they're exposed by an api you're in luck right we can pretty much reach whatever we want with these manual um, rest snaps so let's just grab a random url here just an open source right maybe so i don't have to validate myself um, so we'll hit this endpoint, and like I said, right, if, if you can hit this API with a curl command in your terminal, or you can hit it with um, like a postman mechanism, you can pretty much hit anything you want with this REST get. Not pretty much, you can. So as long as you're as long as you're authenticated to hit it, right? If you needed a, a barrier auth token, put it in the header, or if you have some OAuth two requirements, of course you can connect to your account in that way, right? But right now I'm hitting an open source. You don't need to authenticate yourself. So just like every other snap, right? I get to see those, those outputs, see what kind of data I'm dealing with. And then I get to pull that downstream. All right, lastly, we'll talk about 
how am I going to start? So now I got my data out. What do I do now? I got to make transformations and stuff. So me personally, when I'm starting with an endpoint, I will look at uh, the Snap Catalog, right? I need to start with S3. I need to start with Salesforce. I need to start with SAP, whatever it be. But when I'm dealing in between the white lines, I like to do group by type, right? Because I get to see, hey, I don't need to read it anymore, right? I already got my data. I don't need to write it yet. I need to do some transforming, right? So this is where you'll find uh, a conditional snap to model an if statement, uh, decryption, encryption, uh, aggregate, deduplicate, any kind of transformation that you can think of, I'm sure there's a snap for that, right? So as you're trying to build out that massage layer, right? Read, massage that data, make sure it's ready, and then ship it out. This is where you'll pretty much go. And this is how I like to kind of break it down. Make sure you see all your snaps, uh, and this is how you do your transformations before shipping that data off. But we'll listen to our friend uh, Iris over here and she's saying, hey, Dylan, you might want to do a mapper to pick some of these fields, right? So I'll say, okay, uh, that's correct. Let's go pick some of these fields. Let's break down that output, right? So now we see that in incoming schema. It's reading the schema from that previous snap. So I see the status line from the rest call. I see the headers. And I also see the entity, right? Probably what I really care about. So let's open it up and let's pull some stuff out. So, hey, I got this whole, I got this whole payload, but I don't really need all of this, right? I just need maybe ID, title, description, and price. Maybe I just need those four. So we'll go in the mapper and I'll pick those four, right? All right, I want ID, title, description, pull it out. Uh, and now I kind of get to name them whatever I want. So maybe I keep the name as the same, right? I call this ID title oops title uh, description can't type today and then of course price right so just like that i say hey thank you for all that data mr rest api uh, but i don't need all of it i just want a few of it and i need to clean that up right so right away i go from this ugly not ugly but this kind of massive payload clean that data up a little bit and now I have all the data I'm ready for, right? And now, as you see, it kind of builds on itself. And then you just kind of push it downstream. Okay, maybe I want to, now I want to push this put this to two different spots. I need to push this to uh, maybe an SQL server, right? And I do, I'm going to create a table. And then I also need to push this to another REST API. I'll do this to maybe a post this time, right? So just like that, that's kind of how these pipelines get constructed. Um, and you're on your way. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too long, but there is the basics of getting started with SnapLogic.